Morning, folks. Uh, Thursday, Coffee with Job, one of the greatest verses in the whole Bible ever. Job 26, 14, and these are but the outer fringe of his works. How faint the whisper we hear of him. Who then can understand the thunder of his power? Now, this chapter 26, I've suggested, is God's answer to the question, what is God's response to three of the great challenges we face today, climate change, COVID, and cancer? Um, and there's a couple of other things that I've read that I, I hope you, that you'll find helpful. In Robert Harris's novel, Pompeii, and I love all Robert Harris's novels, um, he says this, men mis mistook measurement for understanding. He's talking about Pliny and um, his measurement of the volcano and everything else. Men mistook measurement for understanding and they always had to put themselves at the center of everything. That was their greatest conceit. The earth is becoming warmer. It must be our fault. The mountain is destroying us. We have not propitiated the gods. It rains too much. It rains too little. A comfort to think that these things are somehow connected to our behavior, that if only we lived a little better, a little more frug frugally, our virtue would be rewarded. But here was nature sweeping towards him, unknowable, all conquering, indifferent, and he saw in her fires the futility of human pretensions. That is brilliant. I would put it slightly differently. Instead of nature, not nature, but the creator of nature, not unknowable because God reveals himself, all conquering absolutely and absolutely not indifferent. But what a great description. This is but the outer fringe of his power. Well, what's he talking about? He's just talking about the, the skies. I remember walking the Morrick Moor in the Scottish Highlands from Tain back to Fern and just walking along there and walking with my head just looking right up at the stars and just clear, clear sky and just being utterly overwhelmed by the distance. And then these words, these are but the outer fringe of his power. Romans 1.20 says this, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. You think of how great they are, and yet they're only the outer fringe. Calvin says this, can we do God a greater dishonor than to go about to enclose his mighty power within the capacity of our wit? It is more than if a man should take upon him to shut up both sea and ha land in his own fist or to hold them between a couple of fingers. It is a greater madness. And that is the madness to think that we are in control, to think that we have that power. In reading Harris's Pompeii, he says, and I believe that this is true, that the volcanic eruption of, at Pompeii was greater than 100,000 Hiroshima bombs. These, these, this, but this power is just a faint whisper of him. In Habakkuk 3, 4, his splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed upon his hand where his power was hidden. So imagine this. If you go out and look at the stars, and then you say, this is just a faint whisper of his power. Imagine what the full orchestra is like. That is just extraordinary. Crank up the volume if you like. Now, do we scrap these tiny insights because they're so small? Not at all. Does that mean that the outer fringe are a kind of frontier beyond which we cannot go, you know, space, the final frontier, Star Trek-like? No, because as well as the, the bigger picture, we can look at the smaller. Psalm 104, for example, looks at the creatures. And there, there's something even greater. Again, I was reading in Habakkuk this morning. Lord, this is chapter 3, verse 2, I've heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timan, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and his praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed from his hand where his power was hidden. And then this, this astounded me. Plague went before him. Pestilence followed his steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the mountains tremble. The ancient mountains crumbled and the age-old hills collapsed. 
but he marches on forever. Isn't that just incredible? Bildad argues God is so great that you don't matter. Job thinks differently. It is precisely because God is so great and such, has such a boundless knowledge that he can care for and give attention to each individual. I finish with, oh, there's so much more I could say about this, but I've I got to finish. John 14, 1, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. God living in us, the creator of the universe, the one for whom the stars are but the outer fringe of his power, dwelling within us. What power, what comfort, what glory. See you tomorrow. Bye.